three and three four with you, and and I, I told you about two weeks ago, you and I are going to we're going to visit those six trig functions three times. The first time that we uh, visited trig functions was in relation to we were talking vocabulary. We had what was called a um, initial side we, of the angle. We had what was called a um, terminal side, and we would rotate that terminal side counterclockwise till we identified some angle theta, which was dependent upon what quadrant I'm in, which then using um, the relationships, for, if you recall, um, there's some R value involved, and this point P had associated with it some x-coordinate, some y-coordinate, and the first time we defined our trig functions, we said that sine was equal to y over r, cosine was equal to x over r, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That was the first time we looked at our trig functions. The second time we looked at our trig functions were in terms of acute angles or obtuse angles uh, of a right triangle. And then that's what led into the Sokotoa sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Now we're going to take a look at the third interpretation of your trig functions and uh, we're going to view those in the, in the eyes of what we call the unit circle and what circular functions are. Circular functions are your six trig functions but applied to the unit circle. Now first what's the unit circle mean? The unit circle is the circle that has the center of that circle be the origin and the radius of that circle is one unit. So now just imagine what that's going to do to your six trig functions. Earlier we defined sine of some angle theta as being y over r. Well with the unit circle r is equal to 1. So we end up with y over 1. So on the unit circle the sine of the angle that's involved is simply the y coordinate of that point where, where, where you stop. So look at the picture, right? Here we see the unit circle. This, this value is one unit away, one unit away, etc. Here we're going to uh, swing this terminal side counterclockwise, stop it at some point, and because we're working with the um, unit circle, all I have to do is look at that y coordinate. That will be the sine of whatever that angle is. Also recall that that angle measure theta, now that we've uh, been introduced to radian measure, recall that theta is the same thing as s, right? Arc length is the same thing as the number of, uh, of uh, degrees in terms of, of, of radians. You probably had that in uh, high school geometry as well. You guys ever recall talking about something called a central angle and you were told that the, uh, the measure of this central angle is equal to the measure of the arc that it cuts out. <laughs> so if that's so if that central angle was 30 degrees, all we're saying is out of the 360 degrees of the circle, this is also equal to 30 degrees or whatever the, the degree measure was. So take a look at what's going to happen to our trig functions now. Now that I know that r is equal to 1, like I said, sine, and we no longer use the, uh, the variable theta for circular functions since theta is the same thing as s we start saying using circular function talk the sine of s is simply the y coordinate the cosine of s is the x coordinate so what do you think the tangent of s ends up being well y over x you still have the same fundamental rules as before sine divided by cosine and then the other three like like before are simply the reciprocals of these three okay so when you see the words circular functions you need to be thinking unit circle you need to be thinking of arc length instead of the uh, uh, the angle theta but folks honestly the homework problems involved with this section you can answer them using the techniques that you've been using it's completely up to you and you'll see what I mean by that uh, with our with our examples so those are the circular functions we've already defined sine cosine and tangent and then the other three are just reciprocals and all they're all they're reminding you in certain cases is you can't let the denominator uh, equal zero. Here is that unit circle with our special angles and again if you just look at the coordinates of those points right we all know that the sine and the cosine of a 45 degree angle 
is square root of 2 over 2. So that point on, you know, dealing with the unit circle, that actual point on the circle has that as the coordinates of that point. Here is the sine and here is the cosine. Make sense? Other facts about your circular functions? They're functions, and as you recall from algebra classes, we always talk about the domain and the range uh, of functions. So for the sine and the cosine functions, you can actually take the sine or cosine of any uh, real number in terms of radians, anywhere from zero radians up to go up as high as you want to go. In terms of the tangent and the secant functions, here we have a modified domain. Now, let's just focus on tangent for a minute. Where does the tangent not exist? It's where you and I are going to end up dividing by zero. So if I go back to the unit circle and I say, where do we end up dividing by zero? Remember that tangent of s is sine of s over cosine of s. So tangent does not exist where cosine s equals zero. So where does that happen? Uh, happens here and it happens here. So any multiple of pi over 2, so 1 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, every time I spin around and end up stopping either here or here, that's where that tangent function is not going to be defined. So it sounds like, uh, say that again, it's like 1 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, so it sounds like odd multiples of pi over 2 right, is where this function is not defined. And if you look closely at what this is saying, 2n minus 1 is a tricky way of saying something odd, right? Let n be 0, what do you get? 1. Let n be 1, what do you get? 3. Let n be 2, what do you get? 7. So they're just simply saying um, it's defined for all values of s, and remember s was the arc length such that s cannot be some odd multiple of pi over 2. And now you know why. Right? And uh, same for the secant. And how about cotangent and cosecant, which are reciprocals of these guys. So earlier we couldn't let the, uh, you still can't let the denominator equal to 0. So if we were to focus on cotangent, cotangent of s is reciprocal of tangent, so instead of sine divided by cosine, it's now cosine s divided by sine. So now I can't let th this denominator equal to zero. So now where are we talking about? We're talking about here, 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 here. So it's zero pi, uh, wait, from zero to pi, back to two pi, back to 3 pi, back to 4 pi. So those locations, um, those two functions aren't defined for. So it's some multiple of pi, which is what's what you're seeing right here. Not defined for some multiple of pi. Now to the examples. And like I mentioned earlier, you can answer, you could have answered these problems without even reading this whole section. You know, if, I, if I'd say, guys, find me the exact values of sine, cosine, and tangent of 3 pi over 2, what's stopping you from addressing this problem any other way? You know, now what the textbook's hoping that you do is say, okay, 3 pi over 2, let's jump back to my unit circle. Let's find 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 is right here. And the coordinates of that point are 0 and negative 1. So right here sits the cosine and right here sits the sine. If I need tangent, I'll take sine divided by cosine. Negative 1 divided by 0 is undefined. That's how they intend for you to solve these problems. Doesn't matter to me how you solve these problems. If you'd like to go back and use um, the, the other explanations that you've used in the past, back when uh, we were talking about the six trig functions for the very first time, it doesn't matter to me. It does not matter to me. So the sine of 3 pi over 2 was equal to what? Oh. Negative, one. Negative 1. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 ends up being 0. 
3 pi over 2 is the same as 270 degrees, right? So, And then the reason the tangent's undefined is because you end up trying to take negative 1 divided by 0, so you would say undefined. So you can answer these problems as any other problem. Uh, second question says, use reference angles. Use uh, degree radiant conversion to find the exact value of the cosine of 2 pi over 3. Now this is my thought process as I work through 2 pi, cosine of 2 pi over 3. Cosine 2 pi over 3, I think of that as being the cosine of 2 times pi over 3. And pi over 3 was one of those quick ones that we can convert to, uh, to uh, degrees quickly. Pi over 3 is the same thing as 60 degrees. So 2 pi over 3 is 2 times 60 degrees, or 120. So we're looking at the cosine of 120. What quadrant would that be in? 2. Quadrant 2. What's the reference angle? 60 degree reference angle. What's the cosine of 60? One half. And is cosine positive or negative in quadrant two? Negative. Negative. Now I just answered that question how we answered this question two weeks ago. What your author of your textbook is saying now is, oh, just go to that unit circle picture, look up 2 pi over 3. Let's go back to find 2 pi over 3. We just said it was 120 degrees, so I know it's somewhere in quadrant 2. So right here is, what was it again? 2 pi over 3. And again, what's the x coordinate since I'm dealing with the unit circle? Right here sits the cosine, negative 1 half. So again, it's just two ways of answering the same question. Right? Question next. Find me an approximate, I'm sorry, approximate the value of s somewhere in this interval if cosine of s is 0.9685. Now, some notes here. When you see s, that is understood to be radian measure. Radian measure. So they want you to find some angle in radians that's in quadrant, what quadrant would that be if I'm between 0 and pi over 2? Quadrant 1. So here I am in quadrant 1, such that the cosine of this angle is 0.9685. Now, approximate is code for it's okay to use your calculator. You can't do this problem any other way other than to use your calculator. So we're going to ask the calculator, first making sure it's in radian measurement. So let me go into the mode button, make sure my calculator is in radians. We're going to then go back and say, calculator, what angle has a cosine of 0.9685? And the, and the answer that you're given will be in radians. That answer is 2517. So S is 0.2517, and that would be radians. Now, I'm not sure if this section quite yet addresses problems like this. I'm going to throw it out anyway. What happens if I would have changed? What, what other quadrant is cosine positive? Quadrant? Quadrant? Four. Cosine's positive in quadrant four. What if I would have just simply said, instead of quadrant one, I wanted you to be in quadrant four? Well, now I'm over here. And when you ask the calculator, calculator, inverse cosine, just what we just did a second ago, right? Inverse cosine uh, 0.9685, you're still going to get this answer. But how do I now adjust for the fact that I'm in quadrant 4? This is now my reference angle, right? The 0.2517 now ends up being this reference angle. So how do I come up with the correct answer? I got to go back to the calculator and say, calculator, what is 2 pi? 
minus, right, because I'm going backwards, minus that reference angle, 0.2517, and then there is your angle in radians. So I wanted to cover that with you just in case that happens to you in this section. Does that make sense? Okay, where's 2 pi come from? 2 pi comes from the fact, I'm in quadrant 4. Yeah. So imagine, here's the angle that I'm interested in, right? Quadrant 4 angle. Here's my reference angle, which is this guy right here. Okay. So I'm going to take 2 pi, which is the whole way around, minus that reference angle. And the last question from this section, find the exact value, calculators off limits, find the exact value of s that's in this interval pi to 3 pi over 2, that's quadrant 3, and we want the angle whose tangent is equal to 1. So we know that pi over 4, right, we know that pi over 4 has a sine and a cosine of the same thing. The sine of 45 uh, degrees or pi over 4 and the cosine are both square root of 2 over 2. So when we divide those to get tangent, that's the only way we're going to end up with 1. So our angle in question is pi over 4, right? So how do I find, and that's my reference angle, by the way, pi over 4. So how far do I travel to get to this ray? Well, from 0 to here is how much in terms of radians? Pi, and I have to go an additional pi over 4. So I need to take pi plus pi over 4, and I get 5 pi over 4. There's your angle in radians in this quadrant that has a tangent of, of 1. Make sense, folks? I'm lost on the whole thing. Go. That one lost me. I don't know. Which part? I, from the beginning. Okay.